Hello everybody and thank you for joining me for some more Yanmar build stuff. Today I'm going to show you how to take your Yanmar or Yanmar clone engine and get it from running like this. To this. Stay tuned. So here we go. What I got in front of me is a Yanmar clone. This is a 186F. It is a 418cc not quite 10 horsepower air cooled diesel and right now i've got it on a gravely walk behind tractor but this video it really shouldn't matter what you got it on what does matter though is some of the mods that i've got on this i've got a cone filter on this just for things we're going to do in the future and i got a different exhaust which is this tractor flapper a couple of other things i've since added i've got this nice fun gravely great into which is plugged a magnetic pickup tachometer because this bad boy is a diesel and it doesn't have spark or anything easy we can pick up on it and further in there you can see is a white 3d printed fixture where our magnet rides so there's our tachometer we've also got this which is an oil pressure gauge this one goes from 0 to 500 one of the quirks of these Yanmars and Yanmar clones is that it doesn't have like a normal oil pump. It doesn't have a relief or a pressure relief in it. What you get is what you get. So you can see as high as like 240 PSI as it's warming up. And that, that's more than most uh, little gauges can handle. Here's a tip, buy one of these testers. The testers are cheap, but the normal tiny gauges are expensive for whatever reason. This was only $20. And this snakes on over to here where I've got it teed into our gear pump and that's definitely not going to go hook up to a turbo at some point. So there's our Yanmar bone stock on the inside except for a couple of little tiny things on the outside and again it doesn't matter what you mount it to this video should be helping you out. Anyway let's get to it. So here we go let's cold start this bugger. It won't be too much of a cold start because it's like 50 degrees out and it's been stored inside but I haven't fired it up. So let's give it about half throttle. That's what it likes. Click this on. Ooh, that didn't like that. Give it a little more. So far I've just run this thing for not even half an hour just to get things settled in and I haven't done any tuning since. But before we do anything, let's go give it a run and see how she performs. Alright, I think we're about warmed up. Let's take it for a little walk. Well, so I think there you see, it's funny, this, this tachometer gives you like a high score. 3100, 3120 I think is what it was. After you turn it off, you get a high score. So there you go, I think you can see what some of our problems were. Nothing to do with the engine, but I have an RPM goal of 3500, which is what this um, old generator motor was set to run at anyway. And we're not quite hitting that. It sounds like we're hitting rev limiter and it gets really mad and really smoky at like 3120. Another issue is, and this is the big one, is that it hazes 
oh, it just hazes this awful white smoke and it's stinky. It smells like diesel boo versus diesel yay. Like diesel yay has almost like a nice guilty pleasure sweet smell to it. And this smells like hot lawnmower with a tinge of burnt clutch. And it kind of smells like if you're firing something up that's been in the woods for a million years, you've gotten like the ether and the not thoroughly burnt diesel. It just, it's just stinky and awful. And the thing is, this is kind of how like the other one I had was. I've messed with one of these motors before and it was also like that. It just belched this white haze that was stinky. So I think we could fix all those things. Let's get into tuning it. Here we go, once you get to this point where your tractor is running, but it might not be running great, hazy, all that sort of stuff. Right here in this frame are all the things that we're gonna be messing with today. The first thing is probably the most obvious. This is the throttle. And behind the throttle, is the governor linkage and that's going to help us set our proper rpm we've got a couple of stops here to make sure we don't over or under rev right here we've got our fuel limiter this will just sort of screw in and out and it'll prevent you from getting too much or too little fuel and unlike a gas engine what we got doing our fueling here is this high pressure injection pump not like a carburetor but there are some things we can control about it namely the shim. You advance or retard the timing with the shims that are behind this injection pump. And that's the first thing that we're gonna do. So even though I saw it in the other engine, a sort of like hazy smoke, hazy white smoke coming out of your diesel engine, that could be indicative of your timing being uh, too far retarded. And we can control the advance by messing with the shims behind the injection pump. So diesel 101, if you get too much white smoke pouring out of it, your timing might be too far retarded. And if you've got a whole bunch of like black smoke pouring out of it, there's a good chance that it's too far advanced or just too much fuel. But because we got this white gross haze, I think we're too far retarded. Another thing, and this was mentioned in the manual, is that if your engine has been run too much, you'll eventually start wearing through stuff like, you know, cam, lifter, and it will naturally retard as it ages. That might be what we're seeing a little bit here, because this motor had 20 hours, that's what the seller told me, but uh, who knows. <laughs> so that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to pull this injection pump off, and we're going to advance our timing. I ain't scared of black smoke. Now, I hate to do this because it means having to reprime this pump, but... We'll take it off, this line off, just to make life a little easier. This is a 17. No, my prime. There goes an hour's worth of work right there. Next, we'll slide this off. These are all 10s. This right here is our viewing window. And we'll use it to get everything aligned. Going back together. Now, this has got a spring behind it. So we'll try to back these off evenly. So I'm just going to let this thing dangle here like a naughty boy and pull out our shims. So we got two shims holding this in. We got a thick one and a thin one. Uh, we're just gonna put the thick one back in and leave this thin one out. We'll see what that gets us. That should advance us a couple of degrees. If you see this, this is the lifter for the injection pump. And that's why I thought I might have needed some advance because it's way beat up. Okay, that was a real pain getting it primed back up again. I fired it up and I let it reheat. And uh, I think we got some good news. It cleared out most of the haze. Let's get this thing back into a starting position. On.
us our high score. 3220 was our high score. All right, let's get our low RPM dialed in. Right here, it doesn't have enough fuel to run. So we only really have like maybe half of our range. Okay, we're gonna put our throttle lever to not quite watt. Stick that all the way down there. Let's see what that does. Okay, so having adjusted our throttle cable, let's see what we can get out of it now. Dead battery. Oh, it's so hot. It's so So there we go, our diesel tractor is back inside after some successful tuning. I wish I could really show you just putting it to work because it all seemed promising. We got our RPM range that we were looking for and it seemed to still be running pretty cool. I really can't tell because all I have is the little laser thermometer. So I don't really know exactly what those EGTs are looking like, but I would say that's pretty promising. Anyway, one of these days we'll get some snow and I'll show you what this bad boy can do. But until then, thank you very much for watching, and have a good one. Shoots.